Well, hello. Uh, today we are in overhead mode and I have quite a few palettes here that I'm hoping to depot today. We've got some cardboard palettes, some plastic palettes. So if you're new to depotting and you wanna see how I depot, go ahead and just keep on watching. So some of these are older palettes that I bought a while ago. Like these two, I did a video on a long time ago. If I remember, I'll link it because I can do that now. Um, but I really like both of these palettes, but here's the thing, and I know this about myself and I've talked about this before on camera. I'm not a palette person. Even though these shimmers, especially in the Desert Lights palette are like God tier, I never, I mean, I use them occasionally, but I don't use them as much as I would if they weren't in a palette because I always am building my own palettes and all of that. So I want to depot these. Uh, I haven't yet because plastic ones can be kind of hard. We're going to do this last because I'm going to go outside to do it. Um, I've got the Natasha Denona one, which you literally just pop out, but whatever. I figured I'd put it in this video because, you know, I'm going to depot it. Um, this one was a gift to me from my friend Olivia. We did like a makeup swap recently, so she gave me this. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep every shade from this one, but uh, I'm excited to have it, so here it is. I mentioned in a video recently that I got a few palettes, so I got these three from the BoxyCharm uh, pop-up sale. I was really curious about all three of these brands' formula, and they were really, really cheap, like 10 bucks or less. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do it. And when I bought them, I bought them with the intention of depotting each of these and I'll swatch them as I go through. Um, these are all cardboard, so they should be pretty easy. I'm not expecting a whole bunch of damage, but one thing to know about depotting, if it's your first time, is that you need to be okay with your shadows potentially getting damaged in the process. I've depotted tons and tons of palettes at this point and I still get damaged shadows. So those are those three. And then last but not least, I have this one, which I kind of went back and forth on whether or not I wanted to depot it because I think it's a good travel palette. But here's the thing, right? I can travel with my singles, and if I don't want to travel with my singles, I have a few smaller palettes that I end up traveling with anyways. When I'm going on vacation, which is like, you know, most of the time what I'm traveling for, I'm not doing these ex like elaborate types of looks that require this many shadows. I'm just not. And I really, really like this palette. I love the shimmers in it. But again, they're not getting as much use as they would for me personally since, you know, they're in this palette. So I'm going to depot it. I've made my decision. And if I regret it, I can always put them in a magnetic palette altogether. But let's go ahead and get this party going. So whenever I start depotting stuff, I always start with my lowest stake palette first, uh, just to warm myself up, I guess. Um, so all of the tools that I use for cardboard palettes are just this knife. It's old. I only use it for depotting because it does get like glue on it and stuff. And so I would never want to use it in my kitchen. Um, it's kind of flimsy, really cheap knife but that's all I use. I'm gonna take off my rings and then we're gonna start with the first step, which is taking this layer right here. I'm gonna take my knife in there and I'm gonna pop the actual like shadow palette out from the case. So we're gonna speed that part up cause it takes a while and we're, we don't wanna be here all day, but I'll show you how I do it. Um, 
when I am depotting, I guess I'll just kind of give some tips as I go along. I obviously want to make sure I'm not putting my fingers in front of the knife. Even though it's a really dull blade, I don't want to be like slicing through and push too hard and get my finger. So I always try to make sure I'm slicing away from wherever my hand is. I also have learned you don't want to try to bend up. That can be one way that you can start to get it loose. But especially with matte shadows, they can be really fragile. So you want to go straight across and cut the whole thing rather than like peel it up because that can lead to some cracking. So this one is especially thin. I found as I was going through, the shades almost were like popping up a little bit, which is interesting and unique to this palette. But what we're gonna do now is you can see on the back there, it's like this cover with the names on it is folded over, over what is just regular cardboard. So we're gonna peel this whole thing off until we're left with just the cardboard not the paper. When we're done, we should be able to see every layer of cardboard underneath. So let's do that now. You can see really fast, I'll try to get it to focus. It might be too close. There you go. You can see here the different layers of cardboard. Really, it looks like there's only two. This one is really, really thin. But as we peel, that paper comes off and eventually we'll get down to the actual cardboard. Oh, sorry, I'm not in focus. And that's what we want to happen. So I'm gonna keep doing that. But that's the goal is to get this, like the actual cardboard. Come on, baby, focus. All right, we wanna get that actual cardboard all over the edge of the palette and the top. So here we go. <laughs> sides which is the most important element um, if you're curious IRL this took me about like four minutes to get all of that off um, so now what I'm gonna do is you can already see I've kind of started I'm gonna pop up different layers of this cardboard and peel it away layer by layer until I get to the layer that the actual shadows are glued into um, so it takes a little bit of time. You want to go slow and steady with this. You don't want to try to peel off too thick of layers at once because again, you can start to bend the shadows. Um, and once you do that, there's a pretty high chance that they will crack. And that is not what you want because then you have to repress them and it becomes a much bigger thing. So you can see I've got, mm, I don't know even how to measure this. I'll show you. Maybe I can show. So it's a really thin layer. I mean, this is already a thin palette, 
but the layers that I'm peeling are still pretty thin overall. Uh, it's better to go slow and steady. The same is true with peeling off that paper at first because sometimes if you're not careful, the knife can accidentally stab one of the shadows. And again, we're trying to preserve the shadows to make sure that they don't break because that defeats the whole point. So slow and steady wins the race. Oh, look, there's the magnet. You always wanna make sure to try to peel off the layer below the magnet so that way it's easy. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna keep peeling and you're just gonna watch me peel. You can see though, maybe it's slowly starting to pop up a little bit at a time. There goes the magnet. So you can see we're getting down to the where the shadows actually are, but you can also see there's still a few layers of cardboard before we get to where the shadows are glued in. And I like to get as close to that bottom layer as possible because I found in the past, it helps prevent cracking the most. So I'm gonna keep peeling away. And while I'm doing it, I'll tell you, as I was sitting here peeling, I had a kind of morbid thought. It's definitely like very like Teresa is dead type of humor. So if you don't like that type of humor, maybe you won't appreciate this. But you know how at the end of Toy Story 3, um, the uh, toys go to a new home after Andy goes to college? I was just thinking about how if makeup was sentient and my friend just sent this palette to me and this palette was like, oh boy, a new life, it probably would not be very happy <laughs> with what I'm doing it to or doing to it right now. It might be like, oh my God, why? Why did we get to get set here of all places? But lucky for us, makeup is not sentient. So I don't have to worry about that. But this, my friend, when she watches this video, if she does, might be like, oh my God, why? Why did you do that to the palette I gave you? And if you do feel that way, I'm very sorry, Olivia. But just know, though the palette may be gone, the shadows themselves will be loved. Okay, we're like right down here to the thinnest layer we could possibly be. Look at look how thin it is. I can literally bend it. I don't want to bend it too much though because again we might get some cracking but I'm kind of finding it harder and harder to peel just because we're getting so low. I'll try to do a little bit more just to get this last layer. That might be the best that I can do um, and I will warn you your desk area and your fingers will absolutely get messy even if you don't break any shadows because depotting is inherently messy. So you have to kind of be okay with that if you're gonna do this. But okay, so here we are. We're at the thinnest layer we can possibly be. We can see like the whole eyeshadow pan. We really can just scoot our knife right across. These are really glued in there, oh my gosh. So we're just gonna scoot it across and kind of like wiggle as we go. And you can kind of see how it's starting to pop up. So our goal is to just kind of detach it from the paper as much as possible. And whatever we can get, we are, once it's you know nice and up, we're just gonna peel it off. And the goal is to peel it off without the paper. And look, oh, beautiful. There's like a little tiny piece of glue, but for the most part, it's pretty clean. You want to try to peel it off without the glue if possible, because that will prevent a ton of cleanup work afterwards. Um, so again, slow and steady. You just want to wiggle it across, get it nice and loose. 
And then once it starts to peel, I tend to think of it like when you're cutting a tree, you know, if it's starting to peel more from one side, I go to the other and that's where I try to hold down the paper. And sometimes it works. Ah, oh, another one is clean. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy. All right. So I'm going to peel the rest of these off and then we will come back together. So this one, I wasn't able to get the paper off immediately, but after I've got it off here, you know, I've got this chunk of paper, I'm gonna try my best to peel off the paper and the glue together. Because again, if we can do that, it saves a lot of time in the long run. So you just wanna be really careful and boom, got it all off. So another one done. Oh, that one was satisfying. That one was really, really easy. So far, I don't want to jinx it, knock on wood, but so far we've been able to get all of them off with all the glue and everything. So woohoo. You may be able to see, even though I've been trying to be really careful, you can see I dug my knife in that one somehow. I don't even remember doing it, but I did. Hopefully it's not cracked. You might have noticed on the last one, and I think I'm going to do it again. I'm going to get this layer of cardboard off because even though it seems super thin, I'm telling you, it makes all the difference. If you can be down to that layer of paper that the shadows are actually glued to, it just makes it so much easier because the more you have to like tilt it to get it out, the more likely it will crack. That's just what I've learned from experience. So, um, you know, worth knowing. And I guess while we're here talking, as I'm taking off these shadows, I'll say I definitely prefer to buy single shadows more so than depot palettes. One, because it's less work, but two, it is just so much waste. I'll show you after we're completely done, but it is just really, really wasteful. I know that some brands say like recyclable palette, you know, but no palette is really truly recyclable. This glue that's on here um, makes it much harder to recycle this cardboard um, and the mirror in it, you can't really recycle. Oh my God, that one went flying. It's still good though, but you can't really recycle the mirror you know, um, and especially if they're plastic, good riddance. And you'll see the way that I depot my plastic ones is with heat and it's not great for the environment. It's not even good for the environment. So I definitely prefer, um, buying singles, 
But here's the thing, right? I am no fool and I'm also a broke bitch. And so I recognize singles can be expensive. Um, you know, I bought those shadows or those palettes I just showed you, not this one, but the ones that I bought, I bought them each for $10 or less. That is like one, maybe two indie shadows. It's actually a little bit more than three if you shop at Luxie, but for the most part, it's not many. So I do recognize that it can be cost effective for some people. So, I mean, I'm here doing it now, you know, but it's definitely something worth considering. I'm not even gonna take this one out because honestly, sorry, Olivia, but I, the last thing I need in my life is another cream shade, even though it's nice. I absolutely don't need it. So I'm just going to throw that one out. So here is all of the trash that I have just created. If you are curious, let me grab. And then this is the top part. So it's a lot of trash for, you know, a little bit of makeup. But all right, I'm going to go throw this out, wash my hands, and then we'll do this process all over again. Woohoo! Next up, we'll go ahead and do this Violet Voss one. I will tell you, I'm wearing this on my eyes today and I really like it. I got it because I've been really curious about the Violet Voss formula because Lauren May Beauty talks about it a lot. And I have to say, I do like it. I'm doing this one next because it's thicker. So I figured it's, I think maybe the thickest one. I mean, the Ace Beauty one's pretty much the same, but I figured it may be a little more challenging um, just because it honestly feels better made than the other one. So I figured I would show it to you and we probably won't do all of these in this video because that would be really, really long, I'm thinking, but I might do this and then like one of the plastic ones and maybe I'll show you the end results after I do all of them. I'm not really sure. Anyways, let's get started. I'm wasting time. glue that's stuck on the end of this knife. This one is glued down, baby. Everyone always roasts Violet Voss packaging, but let me tell you, I'm kind of, I'm working up a sweat trying to pry this bad boy off. But, oh, you know what I just realized? I said I was going to swatch all of these. Maybe I'll swatch them at the end. Stay tuned. Okay. Anyways, I'm too in the moment to stop now. Ooh, come on. I'm so close. Okay. Let's keep going. Look at all that glue. I told you. I just worked up a sweat. Holy cow. That is like the most glue I've ever seen on a palette. But it is peeling up really, really easy. So I love that for us. That is very helpful. Oh my God. There's just a ton of glue on this thing. Holy guacamole. Can you tell? I feel like I'm like out of breath. Maybe you can't tell on camera, but I'm like, man. And I went, I ran, I'll talk about this in a different video in case you're wondering about like my running and stuff, but I just ran two and a half miles and then walked another two and a half miles today. So I know I'm like decently in shape and I'm still out of breath <laughs> trying to depot this freaking palette, man. It's just all that glue, but okay, okay. This is gonna be so satisfying if, I don't know if we can get it all at once, but wouldn't that be so satisfying? Okay, come on, baby, uh-oh. Too much glue, no! I'm telling you, you guys, I have depotted so many palettes, and this is like the most glue I have ever seen. Oh, we still might be able to do it. Wait a second, wait, oh! My God, 
I think that might be the first time I've ever done that. That was very satisfying to me. I should say too, some people choose to label the shadows and like what palette they're from, what brand they're from. I don't, and honestly, just because I don't care, to me, a shadow is a shadow. I know some people are like really particular too about having like pans the same size. Uh, I am a chaotic neutral, so I really truly do not care. Um, to me, I'm putting it on my eyes either way, whether it's from Violet Voss or Menagerie or wherever else. So it doesn't really matter. I think I thought of Menagerie because of the square pans right now. But I mean, it is totally an option. Um, I think a lot of times too, the because I don't label them, people sometimes will ask about shades that I use in my build your own palettes but a lot of times i don't really know because i don't label palettes that i've depotted um and i like that because i i really struggle with the idea of like making you feel like you need to buy a particular shade um even though i'm buying makeup again now i know as someone who avidly watches beauty youtube that at least for me I can sometimes feel like, oh my God, I need that shade. It looks so good. Despite the fact that I have like how many golds that are this color, if we're being realistic, you know, I like to try the different formulas, but mm, I would say the majority of these colors probably aren't going to be revolutionary to my collection. I mean, look at these, these are in the same palette and those are, especially these two, those are like damn near the same shade. So that's why I, for the most part, don't say shade names. Um, if, you know, I'm building a palette, sometimes I will if I know it off the top of my head. But if you're ever wondering, that's why. That's why I don't do that. Um, and I hope you understand and find that beneficial. So that way, you know, you can pull out your own black eyeshadow. You don't need the specific one that I have. I feel like I'm just talking for the sake of talking, but this one has been just so easy <laughs> to do. I mean, I feel like some of them, I legit cannot talk during it because I'm like focused, you know? But man, that that top layer, that one was a workout. Like getting it detached from the actual palette, but peeling these layers. One, I like these ones because it's so much thicker I'm not really sure if you'll be able to tell. I can't grab the other one to reference because I ripped it to shreds. But this is a lot thicker. You can see I can't, I can bend it, but it like folds, you know? Um, and I like to work with that rather than the really thin layer. So I'm excited about that. And I'm excited about how easy this cardboard is peeling off. Sometimes this part can be kind of hard. I find this part to be the most satisfying though. It gives me like Dr. Pimple Popper vibes. I don't know why, but I really find depotting so satisfying. You know, this might have been like a really nice relaxing video for you if I wasn't talking over what feels like the majority of it. I mean, I haven't edited it yet, but I do feel like I'm talking a lot. So sorry if you wanted a relaxing depotting video. Maybe what I'll do is for the other palettes that I don't feel like I'll have time for in this one, maybe I'll do another one and that can be like the relaxing one. But I'll tell you what, you might've noticed this on my videos. I feel like I have bad music in my YouTube videos, you guys. I don't know how some people do it. Like, you know, I always talk about her, but Lore May Beauty's music in her videos is so nice. Like it's such nice lo-fi. It feels like something you would find on like lo-fi girl if you listen to that stream. But the ones that I find, I just feel like they're not as good. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not spending as much time on it as other people. But I'm running into the problem right now, too, if you're wondering what I'm doing. This layer that I have is too thick. So it's below the layer that the shadows are actually glued to. So I'm trying to find the right one so that way I'm not too low because that 
can be a problem if you get like to a lower level than the shadows are actually on. That's when they can sometimes stick really bad when you're peeling them off. So one what I might do, since these three are like perfectly exposed, I might do these ones and then like I did with the last, I'll peel off this like inside part of cardboard as I'm going. But I also find metallics are easier to depot than mattes because if a metallic cracks, most formulas, you can just kind of like tap it in with your finger and it will fix itself, you know? So I always like to start with the metallics if possible. Uh, again, just to warm up. I don't really know if at this point I need to warm up, but it's something that I tell myself. So here we are and look, clean baby. I love that. All right, so I'm gonna keep going. And I promise I will be quiet now and you can just watch me depot the rest of this palette. Okay, I haven't done the mats yet, but I will tell you guys, I am a little worried because I'm finding, though I can peel the glue off really easily, I'm not sure if you can see, but there's a ton of glue on the tip of my knife right now. And it's because this palette uses a lot of glue. And so when that happens, you kind of got to fight a little harder to get it peeled up. Um, and so I'm a little worried about cracking on these mats, but we'll see what happens. So here we go. matte black has an insane amount of glue back here. I don't think I'm going to be able to peel that off. I probably could if I sat here for a while, but I don't really want to. I say as I'm still doing it. Um, I have so many matte blacks, so I might set this to the side and if I don't feel like cleaning it off, I may just not put it in a palette. But okay, let's keep going. We're so close. Halfway. <laughs> pretty good and that one was pretty 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 good shout out to all my curb your enthusiasm fans i'll tell you i mean we'll stop the lo-fi music for a moment and i'll tell you yesterday i went to trivia with some of my friends um and i love doing trivia because i feel like it's the only time that my obscure pop culture knowledge comes in oh you see what I did? I, I made a cardinal mistake with that. A cardinal sin. I uh, popped it. And when you do that, that's what causes it to crack. Did we see that? See, I shouldn't be talking and doing it at the same time. No. Okay. Well, lucky for us, that was one of the nearly identical shades. So I'm not even going to bother repressing it, to be honest. Um, I used to, but I find, I don't know. I repress my shadows with alcohol. Um, Kelly Gooch has a video on repressing and that's what I used to learn how to do it. 
And I find whenever I repress shades with alcohol, especially mattes, um, they just suck afterwards or they end up breaking again. And so at this point, I like had a huge pile. So what you don't see, oh, did I just crack that one? I think I can fix that. Let's just pack it on in. But what I was saying is what you don't see is right next to me. I'm, I have a desk, obviously. It's like a little vanity I got on the Amazon. Um, but next to it is an end table. And on that end table, there were probably at one point over 40 shadows. And that's not overestimating. Like if anything, it's underestimating. There were a ton of shadows sitting over here. And I was like, I'm gonna repress them. I'm gonna repress them. And it was just a mess. And I, guess what? I repressed like four of them and they all sucked. And then I was like, you know what? Screw this. And I gave up and I threw the rest out. So that's my story on repressing. All that to say, I'm not probably the person that you should come to if you wanna know how to repress. I know Gina, I think is her name. Um, she does like a pressing without alcohol. I've never tried her technique, but I know she's like created almost like a sort of like, I feel like revolution isn't the right word, but that's kind of what it feels like. A community maybe is a better term. Whatever it is, there's a ton of people who do her method and seem to have good results. So um, maybe check there on Instagram for how to repress. Don't ask me. I thought I knew how, and I was like, I feel confident in this. If you watched my, at this point, it's kind of old, my Age of Opulence video where I depotted that palette, um, in it, I was like, I'm gonna repress those shadows. And I did, and it was atrocious. And so that was right around the time where I was like, you know what? I'm not repressing stuff anymore. The end. What was I talking about before this? Oh, trivia and pop culture and stuff. Well, anyways, I was just saying, I love going to trivia with my friends. One, cause I like hanging out with my friends. But two, cause it's like the one time that that knowledge comes in handy other than making obscure references here on my YouTube channel and in my real life. But I feel like the problem with that is because they're obscure, a lot of people don't get them. And I'm like, dang, trivia is the one place where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm glad I know this. So I don't know why, it's really interesting. I feel like the mattes in this palette have consistently been more glued down than the shimmers, that's really interesting. But bada bing bada boom here we are we lost two along the way really we lost one in the black i'm just kind of being lazy about but i got all the shades i really wanted which i'm happy about and like i said i've been really enjoying this formula right now i have this one this one that one that one and that one on my eyes that looks really nice maybe i'll pop up a picture but okay i'm gonna go wash off my hands again. It's not looking beautiful over here. I mean, I guess it is kind of looking beautiful, but like it's a dangerous game to play because I could put it, you know, on the surfaces I don't want to be stained with eyeshadow. Anyways, okay, bye. Hi, the angle has changed. You can now see my legs and we are out on my front porch. Uh, yes, it is dusty and dirty. I'm moving soon and so I'm not cleaning it until I move because that's just how it is. So we're here outside. We've got some different materials. I've got these old um, like tweezers. Uh, you can see there's like burnt plastic on the edge because these are the tweezers that I use for this specifically. Um, we have the palette. We have a paper towel so that way I'm not dumping them on my dirty ass porch. I've still got my knife just in case and I've got a lighter. I like to use lighters that are longer so I'm not putting my hand near the flame. Um, I use these for my candles and I really like them. But anyways, okay, so this is really bad for the environment. I'm just going to start off by saying that. I'm also going to start off by saying I have really bad luck with depotting plastic palettes. 
Um, I depotted all of the uh, ABH ones and they're all plastic and that actually went well. I don't think I broke a single ABH shadow, but most of them are kind of hard. And I'm going to start off by peeling off this back sticker because you don't want anything that could like catch on fire. And as I'm saying this, I'm really thinking it sounds very dangerous and it is. And really so was the other kind. So just make sure you're being really careful. And if you can't do it on your own, ask someone to help. Um, but there's always a risk, you know, so just keep that in mind. Um, so uh, I'm just going to peel off the sticker and that actually peeled off really well. Um, so it's pretty thick plastic. I can feel it. Um, but I don't really, I, this piece on the inside, I don't think I could break off. And so we're just going to have to try it out and see. Um, I'm starting with this one because these are all shimmers and so they should be the easiest to repair if they break, especially since it's a nice like squishy kind of formula. So here's what I do. I recommend don't, this again is going to sound so bad, but don't breathe while you're doing this because you don't want to breathe in toxins, but I'm just going to light my lighter. I'm going to hover it over the back of one of the shadows and heat up the plastic and I'm slowly going to start pushing on the melted plastic with my tweezers to loosen up the shadow until I can get my knife under it and pop it out. That's how I normally do it. We'll see how it goes. I have not depotted a plastic palette in probably over a year. So this is going to be a journey for us all and hopefully I don't ruin it. If I do, it's not the end of the world. I can go get another one if I really miss it. And if not, I have these shades. I know I do. Or very similar. Especially this gold. I think we literally just depotted this gold and the violet boss. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Don't try this at home. I'm, I'm just going to say it because I don't know how that works. But don't try this at home, kids. <laughs>
press with my fingers. It won't all come off this way, and if I really want to, I can use alcohol to get it off. But what I normally do is I kind of use the glue to my advantage, and this is where I'll try to put um, the, what's it called? The magnet that I glue, or I put on the back. Um, those magnets typically have like a 3M adhesive attached to them already, but you know, the glue doesn't hurt. The only thing you wanna make sure is that it's completely even um, because once it's uneven, that's when problems can start to come up. But I'm able to peel off this glue. It is still a little tacky, but it's nice and smooth, you know? It's not like sticking up weird. So I'm gonna do this last one and then hopefully by then it's cooled off um, and I can finish depotting the last two. All right, everyone, I'm back. Uh, I desperately wanted these to all fit in here, but they don't quite. These two aren't all the way in. If you were curious, um, these ones from um, Lorac are magnetic. Neither of the other two were. I did put magnets on the back of the Flower Beauty ones, but I am out of the square magnets to go on the back of the Violet Voss. So I'm gonna have to order some more from Amazon and then put them on. So they'll just be not magnetic for a few days, that's okay. Um, but as promised, we will go through and swatch all of the shadows that I depotted today. Um, also, if you're wondering about my nails, it is still the same day. I am a habitual nail polish picker, so I was picking my nails while we were watching The Sopranos at dinner. But okay, so we'll do the Lorac first. And these aren't gonna be in the same order, but they're all the same shadows, so that counts for something, right? Um, I noticed that the shimmers in this one are definitely more like satin-esque, you know? Uh, which I like sometimes, you know? Just depends on the vibe. There are the first four. So that, oh wait, nope, just kidding. There's two more that I hid down here because that's where they fit better. So let me swatch those. All right, now those are all of the Lorac shadows from this palette. I really like these two. I think those are gonna be really good highlighter shades like for the inner corner, especially this one. Um, I think these will be nice like all over the eye type of shades. And I really like the Lorac mattes. They're very like silky feeling. Um, I have the mini winter rose palette, I wanna say, and I really, really like it. So that's why when my friend asked, shout out to Olivia, when she asked if I wanted this, I was like, oh heck yeah, cause I really enjoy Lorac's formula. But you can definitely see they're like satins. You know, they're not like bam, metallic or bam, shimmer. Uh, just very like simple. And I might not end up keeping all of these shades. Like, again, I really don't need another cream in my pal or in my collection, but here they are. Let me go wash off my hand and then we'll swatch uh, one of the other two next. We'll go ahead and swatch the Violet Voss one next. Um, I find that on the eyes, some of these shades look more green than they appear. This is supposed to be like an olive themed palette, which I think is so funny because like the shimmers are olive, but the mattes are all like red, which, you know, I guess like Kalmata, is that how you say it? Those types of olives are red. So, you know, not completely out of left field. Plus like if you get the uh, pimento, is that what's on the inside of some olives? But that's red. I will say though, I am glad that they picked the tones that they did because I feel like they actually play really well together. You would think red and green, you know, are opposites on the color wheel, so they wouldn't look good, but these ones do. And you can see since I don't have magnets on the back, they're like slipping and sliding around as I'm swatching everything.
All right, here is that palette and those shimmers. I just am really into the shimmers. The mattes are nice too, but I really like those green shimmers. Last, but certainly not least, we have the Flower Beauty palette. So sparkly and beautiful. I'm gonna tilt my light. Maybe you'll be able to see the sparkle better. This one's definitely the least sparkly, but it does have like little tiny pink sparkles in it, which is fun. But I really, really like this palette. And I'm so excited to have it as singles finally because I think I'll get way more use out of it. Um, but I just am not a huge fan of depotting plastic palettes. Now, my friend Tara Brooke, um, she has mentioned before on her channel that these shadows remind her a lot of the M Cosmetics single shadows. I haven't tried those, but I lusted for them when they came out. And now I don't need them because I have these and apparently they're the same. And now I have them as singles, so woohoo! And here they all are. So, so pretty. Look at those finger swatches, oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, let me go wash off my hand and we'll wrap up. It's a good thing I did those flower beauty ones last because they did stain a little bit. But that's it. That's how you depot both cardboard and plastic palettes, or at least how I depot them. Um, I hope that this was helpful for you. I know I mentioned earlier in the video doing like a lo-fi relaxing version, but honestly, I think what I'm going to do is use my phone, which is what I record on, to put on some Bob's Burgers because I've been re-watching this series, and I might just do it right here right now so that way I can have it all done. Um, but I hope that this was helpful for you. And if I have any palettes that I get in the future, maybe I'll do a lo-fi video then. Until then, I uh, hope that this was helpful. And if you have different ways that you depot palettes, let us know down in the comments. Um, I know that people definitely do it differently than I do because some people are able to, to preserve their palettes and I absolutely cannot. So uh, let us know if you have a different way or if you know of any videos that are helpful. But I hope that you found this helpful. And until I see you next time, I hope that you stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. Bye!